Well, this is Baruch here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolel, and we're looking now at part 16. I humbly want to say that I've been through this book several times. Uh, not all of the book. Just the parts at the beginning where he's really working hard and trying to straighten out our thinking to realize that there is no thought that can actually grasp the Ein Sof Baruch but that it's also inside of us. Now, he writes like this in the previous little piece. He said that the animated body, that means the body that has a soul in it, it's alive, us, and the spiritual soul, which is inside of it, now in a tight-knit relationship, are here on this planet to gain awareness of their creator. That awareness, which he means to say, is the oneness of our goal. Now over here he wants to talk about the world to come. And we're going to quote over here the Torah HaMicho of Rabbi Yaakov Sakali. He says, Ponder to the ways of Hashem and his wonders and everything else be in, is able to grasp of him. Now when he meditates on this, it will bring him immense pleasure as his perception will become perfected. This, in turn, will drive his mind to have an intense longing to follow Hashem's commandments, since his mind will now choose to follow desirable things and flee from lowly ones. Here are the concepts of the Kabbalah, of our minds, and how we need to learn to control it. He says, the watch of the mind will receive a deeper and wider significance of his purpose in life. Watch your mind. When this is practiced, being the watcher or the witness to what's going on inside of your head, one finds oneself withdrawing consciousness from negative, repetitive, and thought patterns that have been troubling him for years because they keep coming back and back and back and back. Now he starts to watch them and he realizes that they're coming back to him. Now, this is a level uh, that maybe you could do sometimes. What he's saying is, is that you need to actually be able to watch your thinking as much as possible. Consequently, the watcher the pure consciousness beyond form because the watcher is beyond the thought because stronger becomes stronger and the mental form and formations of thought and their hold on him become weaker. When we talk about watching the mind, what does he mean? We are personalizing an event that is truly of cosmic, cosmic significance. And he writes, Though you, and through you, the totality of all soul consciousness is awakening out of identifying with form and withdrawing from form. Form means the way things look. This foreshadows but is already part of an event that is probably still in the near future as far as chronological time is concerned. What does he mean? The event is called Olam Haba, the world to come, which will be the end of the natural world, but the beginning of a new spiritual world, as is known, this will be ushered in by God's messenger, the Mashiach, as mentioned countless times in the Torah. When consciousness frees itself from its identification with physical and mental forms. He, she, can't do this to me. He, she, is in my way. He, she, or those circumstances are the whole problem. It becomes what we might, what we might call pure awakened consciousness or pure soul energy. When it, once again, reading again, when consciousness frees itself, from its identification, identification with physical and mental forms. So what it's trying to say is that things are going, impacting us all the time. But we have to realize that there's only one God. Everything is really oneness. We have to be able to look 
be able to see what's happening, and especially by looking at our thoughts. Even though this very real and powerful state of being in its fullness has only been achieved by a minor amount of our population, and the majority of people are still in the grip of their egoic mode of consciousness, still identified with and run by their mind, being bogged down in time. Nevertheless, this state of being, which leads to total attachment to God, will be the norm in the future, as explained earlier. So he writes, When consciousness frees itself from its identification with physical and mental forms, we think that everything in our world is permanent. We have to make this, we have to do this, because this will change that. And just like you see in politics, where everybody is, this is political season in the United States, but everybody's looking for perfection. That if we do it this way, then everything will work out good. But that's not the case. It becomes what we may call pure awakened consciousness or pure soul energy. Bork Fleischmann, Tikkun Elevator Kolo, listening to the words of the Holy Rabbi Yosef Chaim Mimran. <laughs> 